welcome back to Candidate Focus. I'm your host, Michael Covington. Pleased to have in studio with me Andy Fox, running for County Commission in District 9 in a race that has become really interesting of late. Welcome, Andy. Thank you very much for having me on. In the, um, in the primary we talked, and, and we talked a little bit about Advance Knox, which had not been approved at that point. Uh, we probably talked about ambulance uh, contracts and budgets. So let's go, let's start right at where your race is, and then we'll get into some, some of the other issues. Okay. Um, you're in a, a contested um, um, uh, general election. You've got um, uh, a Democratic opponent and an in independent. What is this, how has this race, how has this race shaped up in the last six weeks or so? Well, Obviously, uh, this third party candidate, Brian mm -hmm. Smith, acknowledges that he got into this race. If you listen to his uh, testimony or his speech at the uh, at the hearing, mm -hmm. he got into it to divide the Republican ballot. And uh, I think recent history in the uh, in the city elections, for instance, shows that Democrats as a party are very disciplined to vote within their party. And it's very it's, it's unusual for a sizable contingent of Democrats to step outside of their party and vote for an independent candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that, that's challenging. Of course, Knox County, uh, South uh, District 9 is 57 percent Republican. And so if the Republicans turn out and are disciplined to vote Republican, then I should win. Uh, I should win the race. So it's a matter of getting Republicans to turn out to know that August 1st is the election day and, and uh, early voting starts several weeks before then. And as long as that happens, uh, I should win the, the race. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Advance Knox passed. And uh, so Advance Knox and, and with, with uh, District 9 being mostly rural, correct? Um, how are you envisioning Advance Knox impacting uh, the growth and development in your district? Uh, well, I'll tell you, I reviewed some of the infrastructure projects that are listed in the Advanced Knox packet and the uh, appendices, and uh, I, I'm disappointed that more projects for South Knox County are not appearing in there. There's about 95 projects that were listed in the appendix, and of those, I think only six or seven were South Knox County projects. I think a lot of development has occurred in other parts of the county and South Knox County is actually behind. And if anything, South Knox County should have uh, more of a share. You, if there are nine districts, you think, okay, well then there should be about nine projects for each district. And, and I think Knox County had less than nine projects. I, I didn't count exactly. It looked to be about six or seven. Um, and, but Knox County has been behind for so long that it should have even more uh, of a share so I'm disappointed with the infrastructure projects that are taking place. And right now there are large subdivisions going in on country roads where hundreds of new cars are going to be added. And yet we still have these same country roads that need to be modernized that was not uh, that did not appear in advanced Knox. So I'm disappointed with that. Uh, and I know that the, the residents of South Knox County are not happy about the idea of a uh, increased density taking place at the the border of Knox County and, and uh, Blount County on Chapman Highway. And they, they fear that what that's going to do is just be a bridge to lead to additional uh, high development, or I mean high density development within those rural parts of the county near that spot. So they're very concerned. And, and I'm here to relate that concern because if I get elected, I'm going to be uh, espousing what my constituents uh, have concerns over. So, uh, you know, I'd say that there is a lot of concern about that. Okay. okay. Um, as far as advanced Knox itself, I, I am concerned about uh, one of the uh, land use designations, uh, rural conservation. Uh, it sounds great, but when you talk to people that are already living in rural areas of South Knox County, what they don't like is a high density development plopped in the middle of a bunch of rural one uh, lot per acre, two uh, lots per acre, two dwelling units per acre tracks. And it, it, to them, that is aesthetically unappealing. And it, it looks great in theory, but uh, rural conservation actually allows up to five dwelling units per acre 
uh, with conditions is, is what it says. So it's a permitted use if you have, if you have conditions. I think it has uh, people who want to develop that have to apply for uh, the, f to be allowed to, to have those additional to, to have those, but, but people in the rural areas don't like that. Okay. And, and if you look at Highland View Drive, I, I think in theory that would, would uh, serve under this rural conservation, but it, it just looks bad. It, you have a bunch of clear space, a lot of clear space, and then you have this very tight residential development that is completely out of character with the rest of the community. And so uh, I, I don't care for that particular uh, land use designation. And you, you mentioned constituent concerns and, and it sound and, and, and in the context of constituent con concerns, you made reference to uh, folks preferring one or two units per acre. And so I, ha I have my answer to that question uh, in terms of which end of that spectrum two or five you prefer. It sounds like you're on the two end of that units per, uh, per acre. Uh, give me some um, uh, indications about what other constituent concerns you've encountered in, in campaigning for this seat. Well, there have been some concerns when I've been talking with people. What, what originally motivated, motivated me to get involved in this race mm -hmm. was my feeling that a county commission at the, during the uh, COVID pandemic was not prepared from a worldview perspective to deal with some of these questions that, that uh, county commissions and local government bodies are having to deal with. I mean, in the past, uh, local government bodies dealt with zoning and, and budget and things like that. And now all of a sudden they're having to deal with where do we draw the line on civil liberties? How far can a local government go in dealing with a, with a health crisis? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was after being involved in that and filing lawsuits over that, you know, it was my uh, belief that the, um, that the county commission needed somebody who had the worldview background to, to address those issues. And, and given the fact that I've given over $200,000 of my time away in pursuit of civil liberties uh, cases, Second Amendment cases, First Amendment cases, uh, I believe I have the proper worldview to bring to, to uh, even out and to inform other members of county commission over those issues. Sounds like you followed um, the, the World Health Organization as it relates to COVID. Um, just, just give me a, a, a brief uh, impression of Dr. Fauci, if, if you would, as it relates to the policies that have trickled down and actually impacted Knox County. Well, he's, he, he engaged in medical tyranny. He, 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 I believe he's a, a fascist. He, he has used the power of government to encroach upon people's civil liberties. I'm very, I feel very strongly about that. There's a book uh, I read, uh, Fauci and Bargain by Steve Dace. And uh, now we're seeing, of course, and, and I was on board with battling that stuff back when it happened. But now we're seeing in retrospect things like the six foot distance that, that the CDC insisted was necessary to combat COVID was just cre just made up. It was just fabricated. There was no scientific basis uh, behind that at all. Uh, there was no scientific basis behind the lockdowns. You can't, uh, it, it just, it, it didn't do anything to stop the, uh, the spread of, of COVID and an, a respiratory virus. Respiratory viruses are different than, than other types of uh, pandemics. Uh, they spread through the air, and they they uh, they don't just spread through droplets. They they be, become uh, aerosolized, and and you can't stop aerosols with distancing, with uh, paper, lockdowns, paper masks. with paper masks, with uh, what uh, you know the the things that go around your face that have the UT logo and stuff. I mean, I I used one of those on a plane one time because I was forced to, but but you you don't stop viruses that way. And, and masks have no basis in, uh, in science. Uh, the Cochrane Review, which was the gold standard for people who, uh, who, who follow these things, found that they were not effective. And in fact, if you look at just population-wide data, there's a book uh, by Ian Miller, uh, Unmasked, I believe, I can't remember the name exactly. He showed the curve, the, you know, the graph of new cases of, new cases of COVID that took place and compared all these different states in different countries even. And 
the curves were the same, whether their masking was required or not required. The curve of infection, new cases, was effectively was the same. The same. They, they went up and down. They followed the same general trajectory. And, and if masking was an effective policy, they would not have done that. So it just didn't work. Uh, and now we're all seeing that. I, I was blessed to have the insight at the time to be able to research that and argue against it. And, but, but, you know, actually, my first premise on battling COVID was government has boundaries. And it can, even if it's a good idea, there are some things government can't do. And that was my position when I was filing these lawsuits. Not only is it bad policy, but it's outside the scope of what government can do. Government can't do everything that people might want it to do in order to combat any kind of societal problem. Okay. Um, let's talk budgets. Let's just shift uh, and, and talk in terms of um, what kind of county commissioner would you be or what kind of steward would you be of taxpayer dollars if you were uh, elected to this position? I look forward to taking a very strong look at uh, third party non-essential entities that are receiving government funds. I think there's a lot of uh, fat that can be stripped from the budget. I think there are a lot of rent seekers, and if you've heard that term, but people yeah. who, who seek to live off of uh, government tax dollars. And uh, I would take a very strong look at that. Now, there are, there are some uh, you know, taxes that like uh, the uh, entertainment tax, you, you have to devote a certain amount of that tax revenue to uh, certain types of organizations. But I think these organizations are receiving more than is required by law. And I want to take a very strong look at uh, the money that's being given away. And I would like to redirect that to uh, actual core government functions. So for instance, if the Knox County Sheriff's Office needs a raise, there's money there to do it instead of giving money to people who don't serve core government functions. Okay. Um, let's fast forward to the year 2027. We've got a new county mayor. Um, he has been elected based on some form of, of uh, electorate mandate. And if the discussion turns to property tax increase, where, what's your starting point? No. On, oh, okay. So, <laughs> you so, can't, you don't have to get the yeah, question yeah. out. So, so we don't need to get the question out. <laughs> um, where do you stand on a, a potential property increase? And Andy Fox's answer is an undeniable no. No. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Um, so, so you, you do feel as though there is fat that can be trimmed from the budget. I assume you've reviewed it and, and you have some things in mind that you'd want to have some discussion about. Yes. Um, anything in particular, you, you talked about the, the, the rent seekers, but anything in particular that you see could, could uh, stand a little trimming? Well, yes. Uh, I think that, well, first of all, I want to use the, uh, the power of the budget to ensure that Knox County School Board is following the community beliefs on, uh, on morality uh, and also reflect what the state, both the, uh, what I believe the community believes and what the state has, uh, the policy the state itself has delivered to school boards, which is not to in, be involved in like critical race theory, mm -hmm. uh, these neo-Marxist ideas. I would use the power of the budget uh, to make sure that school the school system does not engage in uh, indoctrination that is not desired by both the, the citizens of Knox County and, and the state itself. But yes, I mean, are there, I would like to take a look at uh, the, uh, uh, oh, the agency, I, I can't think of their name, or the, the Knox, they, I'm sorry, go ahead. What do they do? What, what is uh, the, the Tourism, the tourism, tourism board. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the tourism board. I'd like to take a look at the money they're receiving. And here's here's a, a big objection I have to any third party receiving it, mm -hmm. receiving county funds. Mm -hmm. They are not providing the kind of detailed budget that Knox County agencies themselves have to provide. I think that's outrageous. They should have to provide a detailed budget uh, of what they spend their money on um, in order to receive money from Knox County, just like any Knox County agency, the sheriff's office, any of the, you know, the, the clerks, the clerks. Yeah. They have to provide a very detailed budget. These folks, these third party, uh, agencies, they just, they just get a check. 
They say, here's how much we want, and, and they get and a check. And they get a check. Yeah. Andy, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.